Hello and welcome. Thank you all for joining us today for our eGain Value Model for Digital Engagement webinar. My name is Ariel Feist. I'm a member of the eGain team and I'll be your webinar host today. We've got a lot of material to cover in a short amount of time and I know we're all eager to get started. But before we get into everything, I'd like to go over a few details about the webinar, about eGain, and I'd like to introduce our presenters. So on the agenda today, we'll be sharing with you how eGain prospects and customers have benefited from being able to model the potential value of customer engagement strategies quickly and easily. We'll go through a few scenarios to demonstrate how the eGain value model works, and we'll be explaining how you can take advantage of eGain's unique value model consultation service with a special offer at the end of the webinar, so be sure to stick around. For those of you unfamiliar with eGain, I'll quickly go over these next few slides to give you a better idea of who we are. eGain was founded more than 20 years ago, winning many awards since then. For example, we've been rated the leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for web customer service five years in a row. We provide an omni-channel customer engagement solution that's built on a common platform for customer engagement, AI, knowledge management, and analytics with open APIs for integration with third-party systems capable of suiting the needs of various enterprises in the B2C sector. To give you a better idea of what I mean, here's a slide with just a sample of different types of customers from those sectors with whom we've worked very closely to maintain a positive relationship in providing them a valuable service. This slide here should give you a better idea of what our solution is. Take a look at the outer ring on this slide. You can see the different customer engagement options that are available to the average customer today. From email to self-service portals, to virtual assistants, to chat and phone, to Google business messages or Twitter DMs, any one customer has a plethora of different ways to reach out for help. The eGame platform accounts for all these different contact points and provides a 360 degree view of every customer's story, ensuring experienced and novice agents and even virtual assistants are capable of resolving customer issues and providing the best possible support. With machine learning and AI built into the eGame platform, our messaging, knowledge, and analytics hubs allow you to connect, solve, and optimize your systems to improve the overall experience of both agents and customers alike. And below that, you can see the other mission-critical systems within the business that we allow to interact with our capabilities through our interfaces and APIs. Okay, I've rambled long enough. Now it's time to introduce our presenters. Linda Yeardley is Digital Transformation Director for eGain. For more than two decades, Linda has helped clients understand the value a successful eGain implementation can deliver and how to realize that value quickly. Caitlin Doherty is a solution consultant who, drawing on her mathematical background, has helped Linda condense some of those 20 years of experience into the effective value model she'll be presenting in this webinar. Linda will start with a brief introduction to the value model before handing it over to Caitlin to demonstrate it for you. Linda? Let me start by explaining a little about the value model. The tool itself is the culmination of more than 20 years of eGain experience and best practice. It encapsulates multiple data points collated from a broad range of clients we've worked with over that time into an easy to use and flexible format. Rather than me just talking about it though, Caitlin will be demonstrating how it works in a couple of minutes to bring it to life for you. So why might you be interested in this service? Even before packaging it up, we helped many clients model the potential value of service transformation initiatives. Whilst they may not all have been implemented immediately, I'd say that in every case the process and output were extremely well received. I therefore feel that anyone tasked with developing a business case for the introduction of an eGain customer engagement solution can benefit from the value model consultation service. Whether you're an old hand at justifying business decisions or about to embark on developing your first business case, the two decades of experience and data points encapsulated in our model will undoubtedly accelerate the process. The service offers more than just a rapid way to quantify the potential benefits of an eGain solution though. Summarising how the value will be delivered and through which channels can provide insight to help make informed decisions about where to start on a service transformation programme or perhaps confirm or prompt a reconsideration of priorities. It can also be used to model different rollout scenarios. For instance, what would the impact be of prioritizing the rollout of a virtual assistant ahead of adding new contact channels? Or of accelerating the rollout of knowledge to 200 contact center agents in three months versus six months? Or different strategies, for example, the potential benefit of deflecting an additional 20% of voice calls to messaging instead. 
One of our customers recently commented about the value model that it looks complex, but it's not, which I think sums it up nicely. As you'll see in a moment, it's designed to be intuitive and easy to use. You might therefore be asking yourself, if it's that simple to use, why would I need any service with it? We do, however, recognise that, whilst the value model alone is an invaluable tool, it's still not a substitute for the wealth of experience that sits behind it. The service we're offering will therefore guide you through using the model effectively to make sure you get the most out of it. We'll then share a version containing your own business data, which you'll be able to refine further, either with or without the guidance and assistance from us. So, rather than me talking about it further, I'd like to hand over to Caitlin who will demonstrate how the value model works. She's going to walk you through an example which illustrates the typical type of conversation we're having with clients, albeit a lot faster. We've chosen to show you four scenarios for our financial services client that illustrate how you might use the value model. Caitlin will first demonstrate the value of deflecting 20% of contacts with virtual assistant. That also delivers the additional benefit of escalating for human assistance via web chat when the virtual assistant can't solve the query instead of the customer picking up the phone for help. Highlighting that 80% of contacts will therefore still be handled directly by agents, Caitlin will show the value of implementing knowledge to ensure those agents are able to answer more complex queries consistently and efficiently. But what if we could increase contact deflection to 30% by integrating the virtual assistant with back-end systems to personalise the customer experience? Caitlin will demonstrate how easy it is to model that new scenario. And finally, recognising that customers are increasingly contacting organisations through a variety of digital channels, Caitlin will model the impact of enabling messaging hub with the goal of shifting 20% of voice contacts to messaging channels to show our client what additional value that might deliver. I'll now stop talking and hand you over to Caitlin to walk you through these scenarios. Hi everyone. The value model I'm going to show you is for a client in the financial industry. One of their current issues that we've identified is that they see a high number of repetitive but low complexity questions that we know our customer facing virtual assistant will be able to answer. And we also plan to roll out knowledge so that their current voice and chat agents have that one source of, of knowledge and they can consistently give accurate responses to customers. So what you're seeing here is our eGain value model introduction page. I'm going to take you over to the input rollout plan where we have contact volumes and agent numbers. So firstly, this client has 200,000 voice calls coming in every month and 30,000 chat contacts every month. Our model does allow for variance. You'll see on the right hand side, we can include contact variance quarter by quarter if needed. So this client being in the financial sector might see a peak at the end of the fi financial year, for example, but I'll leave that blank for this demonstration. Then we have current FTE volumes. So we work in FTE full time equivalents. So this client has 275 voice FTE and 30 chat FTE. We then have have our two rollout plans. So firstly, we have our knowledge and AI. Implementation rollout. So this is our agent knowledge. And what we're essentially saying here is that in Q1, we'll have 0% of our contacts covered by knowledge, and then 50% of our contact coming in covered by knowledge in Q2, and up to 100% in Q4. We've just started at 0% to allow our clients some time at the beginning of this project to uh, really organise their content. Then we have our self-service and AI rollout plan. So this is for our virtual assistant. So we're saying that in Q1, 25% of contacts will be covered by the knowledge in the virtual assistant, which is what we plan to do with the VA pilot that we'll be running in the first quarter. We then know that once we once we can develop that virtual assistant further and add in more intense, we can cover 50% of the knowledge in Q2 and up to 100% in Q4. 
Now I'm going to move you on to our data entry sheet. So this is where we hold the main bulk of the data and I'll give you a layout of this page first of all so you can select currencies here. There are data highlighted in blue which we would advise you to enter but we do already have baseline figures in here. As mentioned this value model has been developed over many years talking to clients from all different industries so we've we've gathered estimates for every area here in case in case our client isn't able to provide any for certain areas. For this example, we'll be looking at the voice agents and the chat agents. We'll be looking at these two columns as we go down. So as you've probably noticed, we have our core data. So things like the agent fully loaded costs, average handling time, how many days their agents work each year. And I'm going to show you this data validation box just quickly. So in the rollout plan, you'll remember that this client was seeing around 200,000 voice contacts coming in every month and they had 275 FTE. So our model calculates that that would allow for each of the voice agents to handle about 38 calls a day. So we can use this, this validation box just to really make sure that our initial core data was correct and reflective of of this particular client's contact center. So let's first of all look at contact deflection. So this is thinking about the amount of contacts we're going to be able to deflect once we can deploy the eGain virtual assistant. And our baseline figure of 20% is in here. Typically our eGain customers see at least 20% contact deflection through self-service. So we'll start with 20%. We do of course understand that not all customers will attempt to self-serve before making contacts. There will be those customers that will just go straight to the phone without even going onto the website. So we factor this down slightly. We use a, a Forrester given figure of 80% just to factor down that contact deflection slightly. So now we've got that 20% in, let's just take you straight over to the executive summary and we, we can really see the value that that would bring if we deflected 20% of voice and chat contacts. So you can see the executive summary here gives a three year potential value. And we're going to look at this automate customer experience and you can see contact deflection value is over 5 million for for the next three years just for deflecting those 20 percent and actually having further discussions with the client they have already stated that they see a lot of repetitive contacts they see a lot of contacts that are the same coming through and they feel that actually the virtual assistant will be able to deflect at least 30 percent so let's bring that up to 30% deflection for both voice and chat and have a look at the difference that makes on executive summary. There you go. So you can see it's, it's almost at 8 million by deflecting just 30% here. So another area of automating customer experience is channel shift. So you can see the channel shift savings here. So let me take you over to that in the data entry sheet. Now thinking about the virtual assistant that we're going to deploy on this client's website, we know that the virtual assistant will be able to deflect a number of contacts. When it can't deflect, it will escalate to a live agent, but it won't be escalating to voice agents. It will be escalating to chat agents. So we know that we will see at least a 10% shift in current voice contacts that are coming through. Now, they'll be shifted to chat contacts through the use of the virtual assistant. So thinking of that 10% shift, we can see in the executive summary that that allows us another potential value of 650,000 over the next three years. And actually this client is particularly interested in shifting over to digital. They know it's it's a growing channel 
So they're looking at the impact of implementing the eGain messaging hub. They're aware that using the advisor desktop to take messaging to take messages rather than voice calls will allow for extra efficiencies. So let's give them a potential value for a 20% shift from voice calls to messaging. So I've put 20% in that and in the executive summary, you can see that shifting to messaging here has a benefit of over a million dollars for the next three years. So you can see channel shift is bringing in a high value here. Now, thinking about the channel shift that we've put in place, so we've got a 30% shift, uh, sorry, a 30% deflection through the VA. That leaves us with 70% of our contacts still coming through to agents. So bear in mind that this client did want to implement the eGain knowledge base. So they will be seeing agent experience efficiencies such as we've highlighted here. So with all the benefits outlined, this gives us a total three year figure of over 13 million through deploying the virtual assistant and the eGain knowledge base. We do have the value summary tab that breaks down these potential savings even further. So if I highlight the year one total here, it's just over three million. Compared to year two and three, where we see over five million. You'll remember that we did have a steady rollout in our input rollout plan. So we are expecting the initial value to be lower and the value to increase over the first year, which is what you're seeing here. So you can see the value quarter by quarter. And then this last tab on the model is where we hold all our value charts and graphs. So you can see we have graphs by channel. We have graphs giving value year by year. So you're welcome to copy these into any business presentations that you may be holding. And that concludes the demonstration. Thank you for that great demo, Caitlin. I'm now going to share a few brief examples of where we've successfully used the value model with clients. The first example is for a FTSE 100 telco who've been a customer for many years. They have a mature knowledge hub solution which has been operational for so long it's easy to forget about the value it's delivering against their starting point many years ago. Like many organizations, they had content of variable quality in multiple siloed repositories which they brought together into the single knowledge base that they have today. We use the value model to estimate the value that their advisor knowledge solution is delivering annually based on data they've publicly shared. This is a client we regularly reference as a benchmark for what can be achieved through effective knowledge management. The benefit we calculated is therefore significant. As you can see, it's around $150 million a year, as would be expected given their starting point of around about 10,000 customer service agents. This example, you may note, includes calculation of value to the in-person channel. We didn't include it in the demo, but it may be applicable to any organisation delivering service through retail stores or branches. I've selected our second client example as I feel it helps demonstrate a guiding principle with which the model was built, that the output should be credible and conservative. This was for another, albeit much smaller, eGain customer, an auto insurance agency. They'd already implemented web chat and were interested in exploring the potential of virtual assistant. Working with the data they provided, which included a breakdown of contact volumes by inquiry type, we initially estimated the opportunity to deflect contacts to be worth around about $40,000 per month based on the cost per contact they shared with us. Our sponsor felt that benefit was too high to present to the CEO against an investment of just over $65,000 in year one, but was still confident enough to put a potential saving of $30,000 a month into their business case. By the third month after go live, with the VA already able to answer a high percentage of customer inquiries, the value of contact deflection exceeded $60,000. We were obviously delighted to be able to demonstrate this to the customer and at the same time validate the credibility of our value model. 
My third example was also for an eGain customer, an instantly recognisable financial services brand. They already have Advisor Desktop implemented and had recently deployed knowledge to their website for customer self-service with positive initial results. They were interested in exploring the impact of different digital service strategies with a focus on channel shift to messaging. Whilst we could have just collected data and calculated the potential benefit of that solution, this example illustrates the value of the consultative service that we wrap around it. During the discovery session, we discussed the different customer expectations of web chat and asynchronous messaging and the potential business impact of each. We also identified that, with a customer facing knowledge base already in place, being able to direct customers to that content by front ending messaging with a virtual assistant had significantly more value than simply servicing the message, as you'll see in the chart here. You may also notice that the other benefits here are blank. This is simply because we zeroed out data associated with the advisor desktop and advisor knowledge to better focus on the areas of interest. This exercise and output gave their customer experience team the confidence to present a business case to senior management for a program of initiatives to deploy messaging and exploit their investment in knowledge to optimize contact deflection. My final example more typically illustrates how we work with prospective clients to help them understand the potential of the solution they're considering. In this case, the client was a multinational, multi-billion dollar uh, manufacturing company exploring how they could provide a more digital service to their customers. In a similar way to Caitlin's demonstration, we input the core data they provided us with to produce a model that otherwise used our baseline data. We knew this would be a ballpark estimate, but it provided a great starting point for a discussion around roadmap and priorities for their transformation program. Not unsurprisingly, they initially concentrated on contact deflection of service inquiries, which is usually where the greatest value can be realized. You can see from this uh, graph that the other benefits are quite evenly spread. So with ease of implementation and a digital focus in mind, they also prioritize channel shift away from voice. They were then able to make sure that the value model accurately reflected their business data for these two areas and sort of focus on these and not kind of uh, necessarily all the other areas. After running a small pilot to test these assumptions, this company confidently accelerated rollout to be able to realize the business value as fast as they possibly could. If you're still on the webinar at this point, then I'm going to make the assumption that something we've shared has resonated with you, and you may well be interested in taking advantage of this service. I know you're all busy people, so you're probably asking yourselves how much time this is going to take. The good news is that it's quick. We initially ask for three hours of your time, plus the commitment of your executive stakeholders to attend a one hour meeting during which we can jointly present the business case we generate as output. All meetings are conducted remotely, though we can discuss delivering the business case presentation in person if you feel that's appropriate. We'll also need you to source and provide the business data that will make the model meaningful to your business. As you've seen in the demo, that can be as simple as the number of agents, volume of contacts and average handling time across each of the channels you service. That's if you're interested in indicative values using our default benchmark data. However, replacing any or all of those default values with data specific to your business will obviously improve the accuracy and relevance of the model. An approach we've used with many of our customers is to start with a fairly generic model and then refine the data for specific areas of focus such as contact deflection, um, as you saw in uh, the last client success um, example that I shared with you. We find it's often easier to get other members of your organization to share information if they have a visual prompt in the first instance. For example, if you suggest you're using a cost per contact of $4, then someone's bound to want to correct you. Okay, as promised, we've come to the Q&A session and uh, we've got a few questions that have come in here. Let's go ahead and get through a few of these. Uh, this one says, hi, Caitlin, can you explain the cost saving through channel shift in more detail? What is the key factor for saving? From my experience, a channel shift from voice to chat is not impacting the overall handling time needed to serve the customer. Concurrency only improves the customer side and reducing queue waiting time. Yeah, sure. So shifting from voice to digital, which is the solution that we implement most, we see benefits from a few areas. So firstly, being able to answer customer queries through the advisor desktop with the eGain Solve capability 
can increase efficiency as agents spend less time looking for answers and therefore we can reduce the overall average handling time um, whilst improving things like uh, FCR, first contact resolution. But even without knowledge being integrated, the eGain desktop improves efficiency with things like the visual indicators that it has, the centralized desktop, and you can use the wrap up notes functionality on it, and things like that that we have on the actual desktop. So they have a, a follow up here. Um, do you believe that in shifting the easy topics to chat, the average handle time of the voice channel will stay the same? Yeah, so in short, no, it, it won't. And we often use digital channels, self-service like virtual assistants to deflect the more mundane or the more repetitive contacts that don't need that voice agent interaction. So these are contacts that agents can answer quickly, um, but they're having to answer a lot of them throughout the day. So in deflecting those through self-service knowledge or virtual assistant or shifting those to chat where agents can maybe send quick response templates will, of course, mean that the voice agents are left with generally the more complicated queries and will usually see that their average average handling time increase. The benefit of reducing these repetitive, low complexity contacts is that your voice agents will have less contacts in the day to have to answer. Thus giving them more time to focus on complex queries. So this is where knowledge and AI delivers value by providing agent guidance and ensuring consistency and compliance and accuracy, which in turn delivers a number of contact center benefits that we've hopefully highlighted for you. Got a few more questions here. Uh, what if I can't get some of the information you've mentioned for the model? One of our challenges is that we don't have good data on some of the basic metrics, such as average handle time. Yeah, so I'll probably take that one as well. So that's exactly why our model can be so beneficial when you're trying to establish potential benefits with limited data. We've been collecting our baseline data points, like I mentioned, over years of working with different clients from all industries. So eGain can give you an indication of general figures. And we'd also, we'd recommend having discussions with your contact center staff as they can likely give you an indication of measures that you don't have to hand, but we can, we can create the model with the information that you do have. Quite a few other vendors have similar models. What is different about yours? OK, I'll take that one. I'm going to have to generalise, as I've only seen a few other models, though I know there are probably quite a few out there. Um, those that I've seen tend to be overly simplistic, and if I use the analogy of a news feed, they create little more than attention-grabbing headlines. Um, I'd like to think ours is the equivalent of a well-researched and thought-provoking article with all the data points and logic being justifiable um, and attributable to the source. And the conclusions, therefore, I think are, are kind of well-reasoned and believable. Uh, do you think the potential savings you estimate are realistic? Caitlin, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I'll take that. So, OK, so firstly, we, we prefer to refer to value rather than savings. But yes, we do believe the model generates conservative and realizable value. So there may be certain areas in the model that you choose not to utilize depending on your industry. Many of our clients look at how they can repurpose headcount that's been freed up through contact deflection or increased productivity to focus on revenue generated activities. We've noticed that our financial services clients in particular are becoming more interested in how a service conversation can be expanded to better understand and find ways of meeting their customers' needs. Uh, another one here. Who do you recommend we involve from our teams in the value model consultation sessions? That very much depends on the purpose you have in mind when you engaged with us. Uh, typically, to generate the model, we work with customer service directors, whether that be contact center or, or digital experience, um, or assigned program managers under the direction of a program sponsor. 
You may also find it useful to include the people with access to an insight into your current performance metrics. Several clients we've worked with also involve their um, systems integrator or other business partners if they're in the process of defining a major transformation program. All right, great. Uh, looks like we've got time for just one more question here. How would we go about using the model when we have different departments and functions with different performance metrics within our customer service organization? OK, I'll take that one. Um, it's a really good question. Um, we can input data points to any level of granularity required, so you could generate it for an entire customer service operation um, or equally focus it on the value a specific department might realize. For clients who've wanted to assess the value across multiple departments and different data points, then we've simply worked up several models and then amalgamated them. Um, it's not uh, clever enough at the moment to do that on its own. Okay, and with that, we're a bit short on time, so won't have time for any more questions, but if you did ask a question, rest assured we saw it, and somebody from eGain will be in touch with you. Uh, you can also contact us on eGain.com if you have more questions about what you've seen today. Uh, before we depart, I'd like to hand back over to Linda for one last announcement. So thank you for your time. We really appreciate you making uh, making that time to listen into this webinar. As our way of saying thank you, we're offering everyone listening in now a free value model consultation service worth two and a half thousand dollars. Simply sign up for the offer at the URL that you can see on the PowerPoint um, on the screen in front of you egain.com forward slash contact us. Thank you. Okay, and with that, we've come to the end of the webinar. I want to thank you all for tuning in today, as well as our presenters for another fantastic webinar. Again, contact us on egain.com if you have any questions about what you saw today. Hope you all have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.